today I have a special guest on, Hassan Piker. He's, um, did I say it right? Yeah. Full name? Okay, cool. Yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> so I like did some research about you yesterday. Um, I'm anyway, terrified. Um, so on the internet, you're known as <laughs> what is it? a woke bay. Oh, God. <laughs> I know. you know that? I do know that, yes. It's, it's, it's a BuzzFeed thing, um, but you know it, that's that's how people call me sometimes yeah so basically you're uh, known to be an american journalist a producer an activist a political commentator and you're most known for the breakdown for the young turks on facebook and youtube yep and we met was it last year uh two years ago when we were going to coachella it was not last coachella but it was the coachella before that wasn't that last year or where, oh yeah, I guess technically this year is the Coachella that just passed. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, oh. we met last year because we both did a job for um, Forever 21 mm -hmm. with Coachella. We went to Coachella Forever 21 and they wanted yeah. a boy in there because Forever 21 has boy clothes. They do, yeah. Forever 21 men, which is funny because I'm a giant person and like barely fit. You half are. How tall are you? I'm 6'4". Six, Sick. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. <laughs> All right. So this is really important information for anyone listening. So Hassan is 6'4". Well, thank you so much for coming. That's <laughs> okay. Cool. That was a lot shorter than I expected. Because you were you were saying some stuff on via text messages where you were like, "I'm looking through like your entire internet history." It terrified me. Well, I thought it was just gonna be like a regular combo. It is. It is. And we were gonna like I wrote down some questions, but of course I wanted to be organic and natural. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, so I'll be honest with you. The reason I was late today, only four or five minutes late, but still, it was because last night when i was doing some like various research about you i logged in i was watching you on twitch and on twitch you started you know we have different opinions here and there we do. you started talking about my country and disrespect it a little bit and so i was obviously irritated inside my heart but of course i pretend like everything was fine in the text but i was irritated with no it. i assumed <laughs> when you texted me something like i heard all the wonderful things you had to say about israel i was like oh no are we gonna have a political debate and i said no because like i thought about last night and then this morning when i was getting ready this thing that i do sometimes if i'm angry or annoyed because i'm a passionate person i did get angry at your comments so i was i had to talk myself off the ledge in a way like i was talking to myself in order to un calm myself down because I'm trying to continuously grow as a person. And I think it's very important to understand that people have different opinions than you. And I respect your opinion. I respect you as a person. And I didn't want to come in here and have a biased opinion or like ruin this interview just because you have a different opinion than me. If you think my opinion on Israel is bad, you should hear my opinion on Turkey, which is also much worse. A, this is what you do for a living. I mean, yeah. Uh, Young Turks, you guys are a political... Political news network. Yes. So, okay. So, anyway, I forgive you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my <well>. country. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, forever, I will always love Israel. I grew up there. I will always support and respect it. I'm Israel Chai. And you Yichulala Aras Shali. So, like, that's how I feel of my country. But, aside from that, I still love you. Um, oh, sometimes when I write notes, I write, like, random things because I'm half tired. And I'm like, well, what was the point of this? I wrote... <laughs> You're like a hairy teddy bear. When you take off your shirt, it just looks like you still have a sweater on, but I like it. <laughs> Why did I write that? That's it. What was that? There's I've no heard question this. after that. I've heard, I've heard this before, though. <laughs> it, it is definitely a common thing that people say. So um, they say that I look like a teddy bear. I don't know if I should take that like as a compliment. No, like, oh, my God. Okay. Because like, no one wants to fuck a teddy bear. You know what I mean? You want to cuddle with a teddy bear. Like, uh, Okay, so <laughs> let me... This is my thought when I first met you. So when I first met you, obviously I saw how tall you are and I was like, that guy's hot. And then I got, <laughs> I was like, cool, I like that. And then, and then, <laughs> but it's like, it's so crazy. The way you look versus your personality is completely different. You're much softer, not, not in a bad way. You're like, you're, you're sweet and you're kind and you, you come, you end up coming much sweeter. So a lot of times I think maybe that's where it can come off as that when you see you from far you're like oh this guy's a badass but then what you do get you mean to i'm not a badass i'm a soft ass not a badass well like you're sweeter so i think that's where maybe the teddy bear comes from <laughs> okay. so regarding like 
what would be cooler like if i was just like kind of a badass like yo what's up like an arrogant type of like vibe like i'm really tall i already think people still think i'm arrogant though i know but if they get to know you if they start talking to you yeah you're much like easier and softer i was actually taken back by like how sweet and soft you were oh thank you yeah i was like i would ruin this guy if i dated him <laughs> i would destroy him that's true i am very um i'm very uh, gentle i try to be but not in the bedroom <laughs> That is like one, that's one area where I am, um, I like to be dominant. So maybe we would clash if we did have sex. Well, you're a Leo, right? Mm -hmm. You believe in zodiac signs? Mm -mm. Yeah, me neither. Sure. <laughs> like okay. Talk about all the time. Oh, I forgot about this. This is actually really cool. So you were born in New Jersey, mm -hmm. but you then moved back to Turkey? I'm an anchor baby. So like, uh, I was born here so I could have a U.S. citizenship, oh. which is something that Donald Trump is trying to take away, by the way. Gotcha. And reverse. Not good. Um, uh, there are a lot of Russian anchor babies as well. But yeah, I, uh, I was born here so I could have citizenship. And then I just grew up in Turkey. And then when did you move back to the U.S.? I moved back to the U.S. when I was 18. So I could go to college here. To the University of Miami. So did you, were you speaking English in Turkey? Um, no, I spoke Turkish. I speak fluent Turkish. You speak uh, Turkish, German, German. It's very little German. It like doesn't count anymore. I In don't English. Even remember anything. But do um, you speak Arabic? No. Just oh. bad curse words like But that's also Hebrew, by the way. Oh, Arabic, really? Yeah. Like that's also... It's that's just, just like a different dialect kind of. Like oh. it just sounds like it sounds a little different when you say it. Like Sharmuta instead of Sharmuta. Um, I do know some Arabic. I used to speak it fluently, but uh, so is Turkish similar to Arabic at all? No, not at all. Oh, so I can say like, Ahlan wa sahlan malima Hassan. Um, I have no idea what you said, but I'm assuming you said my name is Hassan in the end of it. Hi, how are you, Hassan? Oh, okay. And I can count for Well, Meraba and Merhaba is like... Merhaba. Or, right? Isn't Meraba? Meraba is, uh, Meraba is uh, high in Turkish or Selam. Uh, oh, Selam? Yeah. Yeah, so that, that's also in Farsi. Yeah. Yeah. So there's like similarities, but uh, Turkish is still, I think, very different. Oh. It doesn't. So how do I, how do you say, hey, how are you? Merhaba, nasılsın? I'm sorry, say that again. Merhaba, nasılsın? Merhaba, merhaba, merhaba. Yeah. Nasılsın? Sounds like you're stuttering. Nasılsın? Nasılsın? No, I'm not. I can say it. Yeah, no, it's very different. It's very different language. That's so cool. Yeah. How do you say, hi, how are you in German? Um, how do I say it? Hello, uh, well, once do I think, right? Isn't it? Or, how, how did you learn how to speak that? Uh, I actually, I don't even know if it's well, once do I, I, uh, I learned it in school. Oh, it's, it's not like, uh, um, it's like Spanish in the, the US. Yeah, it's like terrible. I, I, I know that like they say it, it says it everywhere that I speak German and I'm always like, I can't. And also, I don't need to because there's so many Turkish people in Germany. So, like, every time I go to Germany, I'm never lost. And basically everyone tur speaks Turkish, especially in Berlin. <laughs> oh, that's so cool, though, that you speak yeah. more than one language. And another thing when I was reading about you, it said that you went to college. Um, but then I, I couldn't tell how many degrees you have because it said a few different universities. So I couldn't tell if it was you got a few degrees or you just kept transferring. No. So I went to University of Miami first and then I transferred after the first year. And I transferred to Rutgers and I graduated from Rutgers with a double major. So I got a comms degree on top of my political science degree. But I don't even mention it because like everyone laughs because when you say communications uh, degree, <laughs> you know? Yeah. When a girl says I'm studying communication, it's like you're just waiting to get married. <laughs> that's usually like, you know, that's what's up. I mean, there's not a lot of job opportunities for any particular major at this point. Even STEM careers are, are uh, hard to find. But uh, communication is like really bottom of the barrel. I, I, I'll i admit, like as someone who has that uh, degree, like the only thing I remember is like the Saphir Whorf uh, hypothesis. I don't even know what that is, but yeah. You, uh, your culture, like you learn a lot more about a culture, like your cultural understanding is drastically different if you uh, also speak the language fluently. Oh. I think you can uh, agree with that, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I do agree with that. I have, I mean, I have two degrees. I also have double majored in accounting and business law, and uh, I don't use them. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm sure you kind of use your account. Wait, do you do your own taxes? No, I don't need to get audited. That's <laughs> just really stupid if I did that. 
<laughs> so, okay. I don't know. but I mean, I can review obviously my tax returns, but in general, I think everyone should have a basic understanding when it comes to accounting. True. But, but I think f- there's a reason why there's those huge accounting books with like all these laws. So people, so accountants can keep their jobs. <laughs> <'Cause> like, <laughs> if you, can- well, you know, I mean, what's insane about this process is that uh, in the most American way uh, possible, the government has essentially outsourced uh, a lot of those like accounting services, mm-hmm. right? Almost in its entirety. Whereas if you go to Nordic countries or Scandinavian countries, um, the government will do your taxes for you and then just essentially send you a check in the end of the year. Um, actually, in the U.S., the government will do your taxes. If you make $50,000 or less, the IRS does your taxes. Oh, really? I volunteered every year um, during during school, after school. Um, I made less than $50,000 a year for like many years when I first there's started. There's programs <laughs> by the IRS where they provide you. I did every year I did people's taxes, anyone that made less than um, 50000 you know, let's move past that. I did. I did. I don't want to. The reason I don't want to talk about politics, I know it's like your bread and butter, but I did really just want to get to know who you are as a person. Yeah. Because yeah. I mean, I think people get to see <laughs> they get to see like this sweater looking teddy bear on Instagram, which, by the way, True. the gays love you. Yeah. Oh, I know. I know. I I used to have. I think it was like 70 percent of my audience was female. And now that number has reduced as I've grown to like i think it's like 59 percent of my audience is female oh really yeah yeah so the gays love you and i understand like even my hairdresser when he one time he was like i saw you post you commented some thirsty comments on uh hassan's uh instagram like what's going on there you're trying to hit that and i was like oh my god he's my friend i'm just like (laughs) i'm being nice that's like if i'm trying to hit like i'm very secretive when it comes to actually anyone i'm dating me too so if i am I feel like when I'm commenting on someone's pictures, liking them, that means like nothing's happening. If suddenly you see me like going silent, that means like I am may potentially be talking to them. There you have it. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure to make sure to track uh, Violet's. (laughs) Make sure to track her Instagram movements. See who she was commenting on and then stopped mysteriously. (laughs) After this, if she stops commenting (laughs) on my on my photos, you already know what's going on. I'm hitting it. I'm pegging it. I'm kidding. (laughs) She's clapping my cheeks. Um, Okay, but so I do want to get to know you a little bit more. Yeah. I was wondering, what do you wish you would have known um, when you first started out that you didn't know to make your life easier? Just in social media world and all that. Um, Get on every platform when it's blowing up. Get on every platform. Like, it doesn't matter and and don't be afraid to rip other people off like as in like steal not steal but like copy their content because like no one cares honestly like literally no one cares every single vine influencer that is gigantic now and and actually does create original content in one way or another started off by doing hacky comedian bits that they totally ripped uh you know what i mean Mm -hmm. Uh, from like other uh, comics who have probably been all- also stealing those bits they were just in the right place at the right time and they worked hard i can't relate because i'm always original <laughs> i'm kidding I mean, I'm but not. but you know what i mean like yeah. it's just like oh what's the deal with airplane food turned into like a seven second vine uh, uh compilation and then you started cultivating a following and then you were propelled upwards just by virtue of having that following okay but what else do you wish you would have known when you first started? Like for example, if I could think, I think I, I trusted too many people or I didn't really understand this like industry. So I got like played by a lot of people. Do you have any of those experiences? Um, I think one thing I would recommend my younger self is like, be careful what you post on the internet. I mean, I think we're from the same generation. Like we're not Zoomers right? We're not like the next, next generation. We're not like 14 years old doing Fortnite dances right now. So they have a better understanding of like how, uh, how, uh, permanent things are on the internet, which is why all the platforms are like Snapchat and even Instagram have like stories that you can, stories that delete itself uh, or are hard to find after a certain amount of time has passed. Whereas like, uh, Twitter is permanent. And when we first started Twitter, we were probably just like, I'm trying to be funny. No one's paying attention <laughs> yeah. to me. Let me just like type out a random thought that I had right in that moment. And, and I feel like that will come back and bite you in the ass. 
Have you ever gone through your Twitter and deleted things from like years ago? So, oh, of course. I had a bunch of, I had like, I had like bad tweets and stuff, but not like nothing terrible. But um, it was just like, Kirsten Gillibrand can get it. It was like a female a politician from, uh, or yeah, I think she's running for president now. Um, stuff like that, that people were like, oh, I can't believe how like this supposed woke bay is writing these things. And the people who were doing that were like literal Nazis <laughs> because they're very good on the internet. The alt-right is like super powerful on the internet and they have a bunch of fucking psycho kids that just like comb through everything. They do like, and they'll find like all the problematic right. stuff that you said and then weaponize that against you. Uh, disingenuously as though like <laughs> what you're doing is the same as like advocating for like horrific things that they advocate for like a white ethno state you know so, wait I mean? that's the worst thing you wrote this that lady could get it um yeah things of that nature it was just like sarah palin's hot stuff like that <laughs> you know what i mean like so you have to go back and delete it um yeah i highly recommend people do that anyway like it's just because it's not uh you're not that person you know what I mean? Right. Like you, we're we're all dynamic, but the internet is not <laughs> dynamic. It's like completely permanent. Like it's, it, and and it sucks so that you have to be careful with things that you say in a way. Like a, you are not who you were four years ago, three years ago, two years ago, even a week ago. Yeah. So that is, I wish people would accept the fact that we're all growing. But it also sucks the fact that these days it feels like you're not allowed to really say anything without offending someone, and you're not. That almost prevents you from being yourself. Yeah. Um, I think a, a lot of that goes back to political inaction at the level of legislation where people would just feel so powerless when it comes to like changing uh, government that they just kind of hyper focus on like random people. Like it's much harder to fight systemic racism at the legislative level than it is to be like, oh, well, that guy is problematic. So fuck you. Like we're all going to fucking out you as a bad person when that guy just might be a dumbass you know what i mean yeah or like the, the example i go back to so frequently is um is do you remember that girl that was wearing like a traditional chinese dress to her prom and then yes and then everyone was like my culture is not your prom dress and it turns out like the guy that fucking got super mad at her had said like a way worse shit on the internet because everyone has said fucking terrible shit on the internet now this isn't to justify that like uh, it, it's it's a really tricky situation because there are people who know this and use this to justify their bad behavior now and right. that's fucked up if you are like a bad person now or if you advocate for terrible things right now and you've said awful things in the past you haven't changed your perception you haven't changed your perspective You're wait just but still can you wear do you agree that now if the girl is white she shouldn't wear that type of dress did you agree with that? No, I think it's fucking preposterous. But then again, I think you and I have a different perspective on this because we are um, international. Like right. our, our perspective is is uh, more uh, globalist, I guess. And I am. I'm fucking globalist. Like I think it's ridiculous when people are like, oh, you can't appropriate that culture. Now, there are certain parts of appropriation that is more understandable. Right. But um, to be like, you can't wear a, a traditional Chinese dress if you're white is, ugh, I hate it. It, this is like one of the things that I fucking argue against on the left all the time. And people like want to cancel me or they say I'm an asshole for having this perspective or that I'm privileged or whatever. And, and it's frustrating. Okay. Um, my next question is what inspires you? Ooh, what inspires me? I don't know. I think it's momentum. Like I, my personality is like, I just love forward momentum. Like I can't stop. I can't be stagnant ever. So it's not inspiration per se. It's more so just like a state of being for me. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Somewhat. Yeah. Like I don't but really if, like someone's like on shrooms right now or like high listening to this. They'll be like, yeah, man, same. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just how I am. Um, I guess maybe uh, it, it's not even an inspiration, but like, I guess my, my insecurities is uh, what inspire me as well not inspire me but like push me towards what are some of your insecurities just everything oh my god um i think everyone's really insecure and they just like kind of hide it it's just all a matter of like how well you can hide it now, obviously there is like people who are comfortable with themselves but um uh my insecurities probably be like i don't know my i never i feel like i don't know enough i'm so stupid like i hate that uh, I feel like I don't communicate my ideas well enough. It's all just about like 
the areas that I'm interested in and how far I haven't gone yet. Like all of the goals that I haven't been able to accomplish. Very hard to lose weight all the time. Constantly struggle with that. That sucks because I used to be fat when I was growing up. So I have body dysmorphia. So I'm always like, oh my God, um, I'm so fat all the time. Um, what else? That's, I mean, those are like the main ones I would say. So, um, by the way, thank you so much for sharing that made me like you so much more <laughs> that you're sharing this. I love that. Um, cause everything you just said, like we all experience that, but if you look at some of your insecurities, what's one, a big insecurity that you had that you feel like you've been able to overcome it. And I would love, maybe it can help other people. What's a big insecurity that I had that I can maybe overcome that you have overcome it in some yeah. ways. Um, I would say that hold on i'm chewing nicotine gum i'm just swapping it out <laughs> oh you used to smoke yeah oh. um i think one big insecurity that i had was talking to girls and socializing especially because i was really like i said i was really fat when i was growing up um that was a huge problem for me and the only way i was able to overcome it was literally hard work and perseverance like every single thing that i've ever accomplished in my life from like um losing 80 pounds in one year to uh to getting to the point that i'm at is all through just putting my head down, not listening to the negative comments, not listening to people in my life who were telling me like, you're not going to be able to accomplish this. Just stop right now. And just putting in the work. And it literally is the same for even something as simple as talking to uh, girls where I was terrified. Like I was terrified of talking to girls because I just didn't want to be rejected. And I think that's something that everyone feels right. Mm -hmm. And I just, I just did it. I just force myself to go out and, and talk to girls and get rejected over and over and over again until it was easier for me to communicate with the fairer sex. Oh my God. I guess now that makes sense going back to when I first met you and based on your personality, I was taken back by it. It's because you didn't grow up like hitting on girls. Just like I've talked before very briefly about how, why I feel like I am still somewhat awkward with guys sometimes. Um, I mean, I'm pretty confident with guys these days, but I didn't like grow up like talking to boys because I grew up like not being as happy with myself or feeling insecure, being bullied until I finally grew into my looks. And so I also wasn't used to talking to boys. So that makes a yeah. lot of sense. I get that. Wow. We're so similar, <laughs> except our views and opinions. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that happens, right? Yeah. So what's something you think that people seem to misunderstand about you? I guess apparently that <laughs> that I'm a, a aggressive, arrogant person. <laughs> before no, they get no, to meet no. Me. But you know, like you're just so tall. I don't know. You're so tall and you're just so big. So you <laughs> you don't know what your personality is gonna be like. So maybe. Yeah. But I mean, you're a Leo, so I'm sure you're still like very passion aggressive. Not that oh, I yeah, believe I'm in zodiac. Oh yeah, super pride. I'm uh, super pride. Super proud. Like I have a lot of pride, which I hear is a Leo trait. Isn't it's such it? a Leo trait. Yeah. If I was into zodiac signs, I would know that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, I I've heard it a lot, so I I know. Um, I do like to be the center of attention. I have a lot of Leo traits. That is very Leo. I don't believe in zodiac signs, but I I um I don't know. I do have a lot of uh, Leo like traits, I guess. But you're still like you're pretty easygoing. Yeah, I am. I I'm not like um yeah I'm not I I definitely go with the flow. I mean I. I get really frustrated when things don't go my way when I pre-plan things, but I also understand that like certain things are outside of my control and leisure time is very different than work. Like if I'm working and I have made like from point A to like, I, I've, I've come up with like, I've cultivated like eight different plans and something completely outside of my control happens that I could not account for that really frustrates me. How do you deal with anger? <sighs> I don't know. I just, I'm terrible. I, I've, I get really angry sometimes. Then what yeah. do you do? I just let it out. On the person that you're angry at or like on a boxing bag? Like, how do you let it out? No, I've actually never uh, understood how people like uh, are able to channel their anger. I guess, you know what? That's not true. I probably do that without realizing. I, I let out my frustrations in, in uh, overcoming certain things. Like if I feel like someone has slighted me or if I feel like... Um, something uh that was outside of my control is frustrating me i will work twice as hard and and keep that in the back of my mind and i'll work twice as hard next time to overcome that problem okay but let's say you have a girlfriend and she pissed you off like she cheated on you how, what's your how do you deal with that obviously that'll make you angry oh no those are those are ty the types of things that actually don't that i can deal with like way better in a calm than, way yeah you go have sex with her mom 
<laughs> no, I'm not like a vindictive person in that way. I think um, what I do in those instances is just really just move away from that, analyze the situation for what it is, understand that it's good that it probably happened. And it's, and it's never like I've never been cheated on. But um, if there was a situation where that occurred, I would probably look at it like, uh, you know, there's a Turkish saying, zararın neresinden dönersen kardır, which is, uh, no matter at which point you turn away from damage, and that's a plus. Like, that's a good thing. That's so, such a good, I agree. Yeah, so it, and it rhymes in Turkish, kind of. So it's like better in Turkish, but whatever. Um, So that's the way I look at it, where I'm like, this too shall pass. It's probably a good thing that it ended this way. What if I were to go further into this relationship and then she did this? You know what I mean? Yeah. That would have been even more devastating. What if this happened after we got married and had children? That would be yeah. terrifying. So that's the way I look at it. And then I just like I just live extra hard. I'm like, fuck this shit. I can't believe that like um something terrible has happened to me. I'm just gonna work super hard. I'm gonna move away from it. I'm gonna shut that out of my brain as best as I possibly can, and I'm gonna work extra hard. That's good. There's like the 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 malicious element there is probably like, I want this person to be fucking. Look, I want this person to look back and be like, God damn, I fucked up. <laughs> Everyone's like that, but I think yeah. like that's only human. I'm like, but yeah, I'm like that too. It's just like you have to show them how you're doing just fine without them. I mean, I don't like go out of my way to show them because I I, I feel like it diverges, right? Those two interests yeah. all of a sudden diverge, where it's like, um uh or converge is that the right word i think converge is the right word i don't speak merge whatever merge those interests merge all of a sudden yeah. and and like while you might be motivated purely by animus what you end up doing is like succeeding uh, in in other goals that you might have and that's better off for you anyway yeah like you no, might be like yeah. fuck this relationship like i'm gonna go extra hard in the gym and then you just like come out of that um uh, you know with a six pack or whatever <laughs> yeah Right. Okay. Um, are you single? I am now. Yes. Were you dating someone? Um, I was kind of seeing someone, but it wasn't like super serious. Who were you seeing? No, I'm not gonna. <laughs> You're not the only one who's a private person. I feel like, okay. Someone said when I was Googling stuff, they said, um, okay, hold on. You were that you, you may be in a relationship with Pokemon, Pokemon. Um, no. Oh, I feel like, okay, what is your type? Cause, can I describe your type? Go ahead. Is your type like a brunette girl with like really big boobs um, that's like tan and she looks like a porn star? Um, Brunette with big boobs. I mean, I dated a porn star. I dated uh, Janice Griffith for a while. Damn, you didn't even see that in your research? <laughs> you got Pokemon in there? You don't have that? Holy shit. Okay. Oh, you dated a porn star? That's yeah. sick. Yeah, she's dope. She's awesome. Um. How long did you guys date for? A couple of months. We're still good friends. Um, but wait, what was I gonna say? Wait. You're yeah, no. I, I mean, I don't have like a, I don't have a specific type. I really don't. I swear to God, I don't. I know everyone says that, but my my type varies drastically. So why didn't it work out with you and your the ex the girl that you dated that was a porn star? Um. Was it because she was having sex with other guys? <laughs> <laughs> no. She actually only uh, shot once while we were throughout the entire relationship. No, I, I was just, it was a lot of, uh, it was a lot of work for both of us. And after a while, we started clashing rather than uh, being a, a positive influence in each other's lives. Mm -hmm. And we're still good friends. And we both uh, wanted to maintain that friendship because we really liked one another. So um, that's why. That's why we uh, broke things off. I would say the same thing about like, the other uh, thing as well, the more recent one too. Like it's just... How long were you dating the, the recent one for? It wasn't... It was never like serious. It was just um, hanging out. But... Uh, Some anal? What? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> just me, know. not her though. <laughs> what? <laughs> why? why do you think I get pegged? I don't know why you're like... I mean... I've, I've never tried it. I, I've never done like butt stuff. I've only had my butt eaten and I eat ass, but I've never done anything beyond that. Eat ass. That's dope. Good for you. I have one time an ex-boyfriend was like really into butt stuff and he ate my ass, but it didn't feel like anything. So maybe he was doing it wrong, but I was just laying there like, are you almost done? Because I felt like it was more for him than me. 
So maybe he was doing it bad, you know? Um, I didn't enjoy it at all. It depends. I guess some people like it. Do you like anal? No. I mean, like... So that's why you like your ass eating. Some, some girls like anal. Anal and getting your ass eaten are completely different things. I understand, but some girls, I'm saying, like, even like anal. You know what I mean? I mean, I haven't had anal in so long. I can't say if I like it or not. I mean, I've done it a few times with my ex-boyfriends because they wanted to do it. So I was like, all right, whatever. I'm I'm kind of anti-anal. It, it's, it's whatever. A, right? I, I think it... I, I don't know. If you believe in the power of your pussy... Just don't worry about it. You don't have to. You don't have to. <laughs> I think it's just a cool thing, especially when you're growing up mm. in your first relationship or second relationship. You're like, can I can I put it in your butt? And you're like, all right. It's usually very difficult for me. I don't know. I just it's not. Um, I I haven't had like, why is great it difficult for you? I don't know. I haven't had great experiences with it though. Like you can't f- put it in even with a porn star. Do I don't think we ever did anal. Yeah, I mean, it's nothing special, but like if my husband wanted anal, well, I'll like, give it why? To me. I, I just, I think it's so overrated. People are probably going to get really mad at me, but. No, girls are not going to get mad. They're going to be like, I want to date that guy now because he's not going to p- try to put in my butt. Is that the only factor? It's like, be tall, <laughs> don't want to fuck my ass. That's like, that's how easy it is to get a girlfriend out here. What the <laughs> fuck am I doing? I, I'm still failing, dude. Holy <laughs> shit. Have you ever hooked up with someone famous except the porn star? Maybe. Were you dating Michael Jackson's daughter? No. I feel like that's you saying yes. No, I'm not saying that at all. No, she has a boyfriend. But we're good friends. Well, you guys have been good friends forever. I feel like because I, I follow her on Daddy Issues, and I think that's how I saw your account from you guys being friends. That's how I found out who you were. Paris Jackson. Did you Have you and Paris Jackson ever hooked up? No. What is this? What is I'm going on? Serious. I feel like I feel like this is a fucking like sixty minutes shit. Like you did way too much research. Okay. Okay. So, have you ever been in love? Yeah. Yeah, of course. How Why'd many, you stop talking? How many times? Like, I, usually people are like, "Yeah, I mean, this is what <laughs> you're like." Yeah. No, I've been in. I've been in love probably. I would say. How many times? I've definitely been in love once uh, uh, in a very long and committed relationship. Did she break your heart? I mean, uh, I broke up with uh, everyone, I would say, in, but sometimes in all my serious believe- committed relationships, but I was still heartbroken. Like, I've, when have you ever ended sometimes a relationship Sometimes people leave before they're left. Have you ever heard of that? No. So you just broke up with them because you were just over it? um sometimes people leave before they're left really yeah what does that even no i um no i broke up with them because like i just look i i feel like i have these two conflicting forces in my brain okay on the one side i'm really i'm an emotional person right and it, but it takes a lot for me to access that part and on the other side i'm very logical and very rational right so um, sometimes in relationships, it starts off very emotional. It's heated, it's passionate, it's great. I overlook a lot of the things. And then ultimately it starts like, I guess, festering, right? Mm-hmm. And once it gets to a certain point where it makes me feel uncomfortable or I feel like it's changing certain elements of myself that I don't like, uh, then I will start talking about it or try to uh, try to deal with that, right? And if it doesn't, and if it continues, then I just my logical side kicks in and i'm just like yo i can't we we can't do this like here are the reasons why oh that's very logical of you and yeah. that's good um if you want to date a girl do you care if she sleeps with you on the first date versus like on the fifth date will it change your mind about her um no but i i want to be as honest as possible and say that I feel like it wouldn't change my mind, especially if they're like an awesome person. But I don't think I've ever dated someone who has had sex with me immediately. And that includes um, the you know, porn star friend as well. Wow. Well, I mean, yeah, we didn't have sex the first time. We just did other stuff, but we didn't, didn't like actually have sex. I don't understand, to be honest. I don't understand girls when they're like, I hung out with this guy, but like, I won't have sex with him, but I'll give him head. In my opinion, like, head is even no, worse. No, we didn't even do that. 
because okay, because I, uh, porn stars, contrary to popular opinion, are super duper duper safe. So they get tested quite regularly. They have like some of the most cutting edge uh, testing in the industry because mm -hmm. otherwise everyone would have fucking STDs because they're having sex nonstop, right? So um, that the reason why we didn't hook up was because uh, and and do any of those things that you even mentioned swap mucous membranes even because that's how you can still contract an SDI and STD. So that's why like uh, she was really safe. That's good. Yeah. Just for the record, for people that don't know, you can get a, an SDI from a blowjob or any sort of mucous membrane swapping. Yeah, that's, that is true. Like pre-cum. I just, I personally just don't understand the point of giving someone head. A lot of girls because do that. Yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, I, I guess some Israeli girls don't. It's an Israeli girl's. It's a thing where if you talk to anyone that's ever dated an Israeli girl, it just doesn't make sense. I'd rather just not hook up with you. And then if we're ready to hook up, I'll have sex with you. Because what I'm not benefiting from just sucking your dick. <laughs> like, it just doesn't, I don't Very get it. Very transactional. So I think um, for some girls, it, it, I think it just is different. In my experience, like everyone has a different perspective on this. But um, some girls feel like it's not as, uh, it's not as, as, I guess personal or it's not as like I crazy feel like it's worse I I well I don't know I mean I've never I don't have a two-tier system so I don't <laughs> care I just I'll do whatever do you allow me to do so yeah. Yeah. I, I've never been in a situation where it was like oh just like can you please just like suck my dick like I'm not comfortable <laughs> enough to put my penis inside of your vagina <laughs> that would be a weird conversation <laughs> right like I, right. I, that that would be weird Right. I just, I don't see the point. Like if I'm going to go all the way, like I'm just going to go all the way. But I don't know. Yeah. That's just me. But I you always, like giving head. Yeah. With someone I'm dating. Yeah. If I'm dating the guy, like, yeah, I love giving head. Like I love to turn him on and it doesn't always have to lead to sex. But if someone I'm just starting to hook up, I just don't see the point. Why would I give him head? It, in the what weird, if they eat you out? If they want to eat me out, thank you so much. Wow. But like I'm not going to give them head interesting okay i rather have sex first i just feel like in a weird way it's like degrading for me because it's like me just getting on my knees like giving this guy that I barely know head a lot of the time when i was younger when i started to date a guy we had sex first and then i started to give him head interesting i really think it's a weird israeli girl thing i mean i i, I feel like there are definitely girls like that that i've encountered that are not israeli but um i did date an israeli girl i remember you told me yeah yeah um what is she she was really conservative too. Damn. No, I'm not. No, 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 no. Like until she wasn't is what I mean. Yeah, like yeah. she was really conservative leading up to uh, that that stuff. But yeah, so I can't really say. She definitely didn't do the like, oh, blowjob only thing though. From a guy's perspective, this is like so different. Or just like, <laughs> we don't give a shit. Like we'll take anything, dude. <laughs> but I wish I could be. We'll the guys are like, anything. oh, can I put my finger in your vagina? Like, that's fine. I'll, I'll just take whatever I can. <laughs> this is great. I don't know. Like I haven't even like. I the, like I've talked about it before and I'm still sticking to my to the same thing I haven't like I haven't had a chance to date anyone this year I've been so focused on work and like my house and changing things that I've been so out of it when it came to, comes to dating like guys have taken me out when I was really bored and I was like okay fine but I wasn't attracted to any of them and I haven't even I haven't had sex with anyone I haven't even kissed anyone since December of last God year damn. so I, holy shit at this point I just forgot what it's like <laughs> like I don't even remember damn okay do you not even have like a like a fuck buddy or something like i have i have friends like i have girlfriends that uh that i have exactly this sort of relationship with where we're like they're great and and it's awesome and the sex is really good and the sexual chemistry is great where like i know that as long as they don't have a relationship as long as they're not like in a relationship or right. whatever we could just like hook up uh when i um i don't know when when either of us wants it and and like i've known some of these girls for like years you know what i mean and like there will be times where i'll be like hey do you want to hang out and they'll be like no i'm i'm actually like i have a boyfriend now <laughs> you know and yeah. and that's fine like i don't take it personally or whatever but you don't have anything like that you don't have like any people that you trust that you know because everyone with? i've slept with was somebody that was like going out with contrary to like me being daddy issues that's more the kind of person that i really am so it's like, if I'm done with you, I'm done with you forever. There is like one guy that I guess I could be considering sleeping with him again because I'm so bored. But he, he is someone that I went out with before. But I, f I feel I like that's like, yeah, what? 
that's way more difficult than what i'm talking about you know i know i, mean? I don't have like a fuck buddy i wish I like did, you're gonna but... get back in a relationship with them then because like i can't yeah <laughs> like i can't hook up with my exes like i i would like fall back in love you know what i, I mean? don't know how to not be with someone that i'm sleeping with i wish i hadn't i wish at this age i would have already like understood how to do that but like and as, as cool as i can pretend to be like it would bother me if he was sleeping with other people if i'm sleeping with you like i don't want you then sleeping with other people Ooh. do you do you find yourself to be like kind of possessive in that way secretly like i won't show it yeah no I, I, I mean i get it i'm kind of the that way yeah. too i think a lot of people are but i'm not i'm certainly not like um not possessive like don't go out don't do this like i want you to go out have fun like without me i'm good but like as long as you don't disrespect me yeah yeah so you would never do an open relationship no would you uh, yeah i mean i dated a porn star so yeah but it was her job like she wasn't technically she this was making true. money she was enjoying it it's her job this is i mean she was enjoying it you can like porn stars can enjoy it it's right right but we, it wasn't like the same as like having sex with someone that you love and care yeah for. Yeah. Do, do you like when do you see yourself wanting to get married? Ooh, that's a tough one. I really don't know. I probably like 35, 36, which is like kind of fucking creeping on me. Like I'm 20, I'm going to be 28 in a month. And oh shit. Yeah. And and um yeah, when I was younger, when I was like 25, I guess I just was like oh, 35 is like decades, uh, a decade. But now I'm realizing that like I'm going to be 30 before I know it and and yeah. I don't have like I mean I have experience in relationships like I know how to be a really good boyfriend and stuff but um that was always that was my big fear when I was younger is like what if I just don't learn how to coexist with a person that I care for and get too comfortable in my own personal space and then before I know it I'm like 40 years old and alone and and I just can't I don't have like the um the mental fortitude to be able to live with someone and yeah. and that like was terrifying for me always i think uh i think that's like a normal fear a lot of people have i definitely yeah. have that fear i just like like the other day i tweeted about how i don't understand just because two people are married why the minute you get married why you're forced to then share a room with your partner i just feel like that's a little suffocating and i just feel like that's more of a bad thing than a good thing because i do believe in like a so when I make comments like that, that does scare me. It makes me feel like, am I not ready for something next? But I think I personally feel like I am. Well, I also think the traditional concept of like uh, the traditional concept of marriage only works if there is a traditional gender hierarchy. And, uh, and now that that traditional gender hierarchy is completely broken, women are in the workplace. Uh, women can be the primary breadwinners. It's not just about like popping out babies and taking care mm -hmm. of the family in that way. Uh, they're no longer like the caretakers. Uh, they can be the breadwinners as well we can no longer have that traditional concept. Like I, I legitimately believe this. That's, there's a reason why arranged marriages are more successful than like the Western uh, marriages where you like find someone you love and then like get married to them. It has a much higher rate of divorce. And that's because you need to have in some ways an oppressive culture to make sure that the women stay uh, in, like a, in like a lower um, class almost. Right. But another reason why there's a higher divorce rate, it's actually also because of the social media world and the fact that if you people no, don't but women had a, I mean, there was a higher divorce rate in Western cultures even before social media, but it's, it keeps going up now. It's like 50%. No, it was, rate. it was, it was 50%. Like even, I think it was always like 51% or something for a very long time. I don't know if it's increased in the recent years. It probably has. And you're right. Social media definitely does play a part in that. But what I'm simply stating is like even a time before social media, Western culture where like, um, where, uh, feminism took root. Right. Uh, so you're saying if we get married, I should just quit my job. I'm, I'm down. So like, let's just do it. That's not, I want to be a housewife. Let's go. No. I'm ready. No, no, no. That wasn't what I meant at all, which, um, yeah, sure. We can. Do you want to go to the courthouse after this to get our marriage <laughs> Yeah, we can license? figure it out. I mean, you're going to be the breadwinner, though. You make more no, money than I do. I, I, no, let's go back to the... You like, have a house, <laughs> dude. Like, are you kidding me? I don't... I live with my one dog in a fucking apartment still. You're, like, way ahead of me in that game. Uh, but, but my point was, no, of course, I'm not saying that, like, women should go back and, like, uh, be caretakers and just, you know, pop out babies. I'm saying that we need to redefine or, or kind of reconfigure the traditional understanding of marriage and how it's supposed to work. And I think that's part of the problem right now. 
it's the exact opposite of what I, because uh, like a lot of traditionalists will advocate and say like, no, that's exactly why women should stay in the kitchen, like a barefooted and pregnant, you know, and that's not what I'm Let's saying go. at all. Let's Some girls it. want that. And I respect that. I'm saying that I, I wouldn't be into that. Oh, never mind. Yeah, no, I like, I like, uh, I like girls that fuck shit up. Like I, right. I really am a, a, a fan of, of, uh, just anyone who is, um, who is successful and like working very hard. And, uh, I really appreciate that. And I feel like a lot of guys don't, especially in Los Angeles where I like agree. men are intimidated. And I think a lot of guys say they want it. And then when they start to date the girl who is maybe in that moment more successful than them, it makes them bitter. And they, um, I feel like they ruin the relationship where they put the woman down because she's more successful. Um, I've had some like very minor uh, experiences in this uh, field. I can only speak for myself. Uh, it was never about like that person. It was never about uh, my partner's success or being more successful to me. Uh, I think it's more about like the way uh, that your partner treats you and what their expectations are and what your expectations are. But I definitely understand why like um, I, I, I have seen it. I've like observed other people uh, experience similar things where like from the girl's perspective, especially like my girlfriends will complain about it. Yeah. But um, but yeah, I think I think that's insecurity. Like some, a lot of men are just like insecure. I, I want uh, I want a partner like that's literally what I look for in a person is like someone who can motivate me and someone who I respect and admire. And like uh, and a part of that admiration is is similar goals that I have. Like if they're very successful, if they're very motivated, if they're working really hard, like I love that. I agree. I want that in my partner too. I don't mind if my partner makes less money than me in that moment. Like I will help you go from A to like Z. I will like, I'm very passionate in my own world, but like I love pushing other people to succeed. I'm the same way. So like I, and I think that's what uh, you, you would want in general from your partner. So I wouldn't be able to date someone if they're not as successful as me, quote unquote, but they also don't have goals. I can't date you because after a while I will become resentful and I could be kind of rude. I've had weird. that experience as well. I, like, you're right. Yeah. You have to continue to be motivated because you have to encourage me. Like, don't be like, if I'm like, I'm working and you're just like, oh, I just rather like smoke all day or whatever. Like have a, a plan, a, a goal or something. I, I kind of agree. I mean, not not kind of, I totally agree with that. And I think like, that's probably a, a flaw that people like us have as well, where we might be a little overbearing without realizing it. And, and when it comes to goals and work, but I think it's an, yeah. the immigrant mentality that we have. Probably, yeah. So you just got to find an immigrant, dude. That's <laughs> what you got to do. But yeah, I just, I don't know. I really value having uh, like an intelligent partner who I respect, uh, who I can have like conversations with. Because there are there are plenty of girls that have different interests who are very smart, but like not in the way that uh, I, I'm interested and, and, you know, we'll hook up. We might even have incredible sexual chemistry and that's great. They might be super pretty, but it doesn't, uh, it doesn't get me going. Like it doesn't right. uh, do it for me. Okay. Now I feel terrible asking you the next question that suddenly popped in my brain when you were talking about you being an immigrant, because you just said something so like calm and sweet. And my next question is so inappropriate, but <laughs> I've been curious, are you circumcised? Uh, yeah, no, I, I am circumcised Muslim. Oh, Muslims are all circumcised. Yeah. We do a ceremony called Sunnit, where but I didn't do that. I just I was born here, so they got that done as soon as you were born. But Turkish people in Muslim in Muslim culture, you get it when you're like in when you're like six years old to like fourteen, I think. Oh, I didn't. Wait, yeah. what? Yeah, there's like a there's like a <laughs> not fourteen, maybe like six to twelve, where like there's a process. It's like a there's a celebration. You yeah. can be twelve years old getting I circumcised. So. I, I, I'm. I don't want to. I, I don't want to say something wrong. I, I might be wrong on that, but I. I feel like you can get it as like late as that, even. Um. Maybe not. I okay. Cool. Um. I am curious. So my last episode, I had a um plastic surgeon on, and she was a. She focuses in vagina plasty. And I'm really oh, I excited. Remember. I, yeah. You remember because you saw my friends only story. Yes, I did. <laughs> oh and, my God, I forgot. And I was like, and I was immediately like, yo, what's up? Are we doing this podcast or what's going on? Oh yeah. So Hassan <laughs> sees my friends only on Instagram stories. And on my friends only, I showed how I took 23 pictures. If you guys listened to the last episode, you would know. I took 23 pictures of my vagina. Looked like from, good. from from what I you could couldn't and see. Couldn't, I couldn't see, but it just it still looked good. I took a screenshot of all those pictures. Obviously, I blurred out my my uh labia or whatever but 
my friends only could see it but a lot of times my friends only stuff are pretty like abrasive oh yeah i love <laughs> so, it but like but that's why it's friends only but you saw that and you're like hey, oh my god what is that or like hey what's up i forgot what you said but i don't know i like what i saw though <laughs> <laughs> but anyway so <laughs> you couldn't see anything it was blurred i know out. still <laughs> <laughs> so I show the doctor and you also you saw my video after where I said my vagina is perfect. She's great. Mm -hmm. um, she's doing fine. But I am curious for you as a guy. Do you care uh, if a woman, if her vagina, do you know what labia is? Yeah, I, I, I don't care. Do you, like, okay. So do you care if her labia hangs out or if it's fully in? Um, my preference in that instance is probably not fully in, but like, um, but kind of in, uh, but it doesn't matter. Because like, you're that's just my, excited to be a part of the included. The, yeah, 100%. I've never been like, I've never been like, oh, man, I really hate that. Like her, <laughs> what is it? Labia? labia. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Way to phrase that at all. Oh, man, I hate that it just like flaps out. That's terrible. Like, I don't really give a shit. You Do you even notice that? Or you're just so excited to be a part of the... You can notice it. I mean, some clitorises are like really big, too. That's I like, used to think it was a clitoris. You're talking still about the labia. Oh, really? Yeah. So the top part like that like covers the clitoris? Is yeah, still that's the like, hood. The clitoris the hood, is yeah. inside. Yeah, yeah true. You okay. open them up. Yeah, so like sometimes the hood is too big or, or whatever. Would you, would that make you not want to go down on a girl if her, like no. if it hangs out there? No, not at all. What do you do? You just like, you just like yeah, part, there's, like, different part ways the sea? Of, yeah, there's different <laughs> ways of parting, yeah. I just, I you can use your like lips to, to counterbalance kind of, <laughs> you know? No, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. What do you mean? About. You've gotten your pussy eaten. <laughs> vagina. I hate that word pussy, but... Um, Wait, really? Yeah. Uh -huh. It, like, bothers me. I feel like vagina is too technical. I mean, I'll talk, like, when, like obviously, when I'm in bed, like, I dirty talk. But, like, the thought of when it's over... What about eat, cock? Does that give you a similar, like, dis... No, but the word pussy just... Ugh. Huh, interesting. Um, But it's like, it's like, you know, when you're watching porn and you do the deed and then right after when you're looking at the porn you're like ew what is this this is naughty i don't want to look at this you feel disgusted i don't feel that way oh i'm like what am i looking at you know <laughs> that's just me that's interesting that. i would think about that a little bit further maybe introspect on that <laughs> see why like you have a, a feeling of shame or even disgust in some instances once oh my god that's so interesting once you've satisfied yourself that's a good point i think it's probably a, a woman thing a lot of us women were probably told growing up to not masturbate to not look at porn so it's i know that's terrible comes with that that's a good i've gotten good the you. first i've gotten the first ever vibrator for a lot of the girls i've dated oh my god but you keep giving them new ones right it's not like the same one yeah I, I mean, I have like a personal uh, one. I have like a cock ring and another vibrator and stuff. But I and mean, you're using I, every girl you hook up I with. Clean it. And honestly, when I've heard guys say that before, and I find that so disgusting. Like, no, let's go. Some people do buy a new vibrator. Some people do, but like I gift people vibrators too. Yeah. So that's good to know. So you like sex toys in the bedroom? I just, I'm a perpetual pleaser. So for me, it's that's uh, very important. That me, I'm still very dominant. But I also want to make sure that the other person is having a good time. And I feel like uh, a lot of the things that you literally just mentioned as far as like people feeling insecure about their sexuality or people being socially conditioned to feel insecure about their sexuality is precisely why um, a lot of women don't even have an orgasm when they're having sex, which is fucking awful. Wait, women can have orgasms? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? I thought that was a myth. <laughs> yeah. So... <laughs> So that's like, that's the reason why, I, I mean, I don't mind using sex toys and stuff that's because good. like it gives you such a significant upper hand for all the guys that are listening to this. Like, honestly, it, it just, cause I've heard from so many dudes that, uh, that, that feel so, and they'll never admit that this is insecurity, but so many dudes would be like, Oh, I could just get the job done with my dick. It's like, no don't. dude, no, <laughs> like you don't even understand how a vagina works. You dumbass. When you say that, like, it's so obvious that like, you don't even understand how a vagina works. Some I girls know. can come that way. I don't like it when a guy's like, they get, they, they feel competitive with a vibrator or they get annoyed yeah. and you're like, dude, like, do you just, do you not care if I orgasm? Yeah. <laughs> on. We're on the same team, dog. Like this <laughs> yeah. is just like, this is like, uh. This is like being able to, it's like using a, 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 a different engine in your Formula One car, uh, you know? Yeah. Everyone else is like driving uh, the stock models and you somehow got nitrous boost or some shit. 
yeah. just do it it's a good idea yeah one of the last guys i was dating um he is like not as dominant in the bedroom so i don't like to be dominant in the bedroom like i'm tired you know anyway so he also doesn't care to like use toys and that pisses me off and he always wants me to be on top and i'm like like you know i i, I, I don't would, like that and I i'm hate, just like someone kill me i did not exercise i hate cowgirl <laughs> i don't like cowgirl that much I, I love missionary me too i think yeah. a lot of girls love missionary too like I, I, they just like i want to look sexy on top for two minutes and then to be honest i'm exhausted and all i'm thinking like all girls think in their head like oh my god how much longer <laughs> like i can't do this well i mean i usually just i still dominate from the uh if even in the uh, cowgirl position oh that's good yeah yeah cool i work out man that's that's the point i work out too but it's just exhausting yeah i i guess it's worth it though to be on top oh for the for, for you for me it's worth yeah. it yeah and yeah you're right some guys i feel like before when i've tried to use one of my toys and i'm sleeping with someone and they like kind of they try to pretend like they're cool with it but then they don't like as I'm trying to use the vibrator, no. they put their whole body like over me. So I can't actually use it. Like I have to move the vibrator. Or they might not know how to use the vibrator. Because it is not easy to just like have sex with a vibrator if you've never done it before. So that might literally oh. be the reason. They might not be like trying to purposely stop you from using it. Um, they might just put their body weight without realizing. But <laughs> and yeah. then it's just like vibrating on my stomach. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like a vibrator can actually be good for the girl and for the guy guys don't realize that but like if you in certain positions if you're using the vibrator you can like the vibrator can also be used like on the guy's balls at the same time so it's really like all around fun times yeah i mean i'm personally I, like i said i have a cock ring um but those i feel like i've had that with my first boyfriend and i feel like those don't they do nothing they're not as powerful as like the better uh vibrators for sure and Where it depends on what you have like i have a like an actual one not like a fucking oh Durex i thought like the five dollar one no 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 because that one like where's no i have a legit go? i have a legit uh cock ring that you can use as a vibrator if you wanted to it's good though it's good too because it's like supposed to cut circulation off and and uh and uh keep your wow we are really talking about penises okay yeah no it's supposed to cut circulation off and and make you harder the cock ring? Yeah. Okay. It does. I'm going to Google those. Yeah. I mean, I guess what's the point for me to Google it? Well, maybe with the other dude that you were <laughs> contemplating getting in a relationship with again. No, I'm not going to get in a relationship with him again. Sure. But okay. No, I wouldn't mind like having a sex partner where it's just like my fuck buddy. I wouldn't mind. But um, sometimes it's not even, in my opinion, it's not even about liking a lot of girls and guys are in this position where you don't even like the other person, but it's more about your ego. Like I just, then you almost want that person to like you. And if they don't like you now, you're suddenly like, why doesn't this person like me? Even yeah. though you never wanted to date them. Yeah. I think it's very different. Like it's a very different mentality to have where you're like, I care about this person enough, but just so much so that I don't actually care if she uh, hooks up yeah. with other people. Cause then it's like, you're hooking up with someone. Then you're kind of like, why, do, why, how come this guy doesn't care if like yeah, no, I, I hook up with someone else? I don't feel that way. Yeah. No, there are a lot of, there are plenty of girls that I just, I love and, and uh they're awesome to hang out with and awesome to hook up with where i don't feel that way at all like i don't yeah. get jealous like why is she with that i know so i think a lot of girls sometimes do get those feelings i mean i've i try not to be that person but can i really not care at all i mean usually if i'm like sleeping with someone i have to like certain things about them for me to even want to sleep with them so I've never like met someone that was like, oh, this person completely grosses me out. I hate everything about his life, but like he has a nice dick. So I'll fuck him. Like I've never had, like I, maybe that's what I need to find then to have a, an, a fuck All the buddy. dudes that you fucked have bad dicks. Okay. We no, they're all like, no, I like everything all around about them. Yeah. So I guess then you, sh I, I don't know. Or I'll start like having a fairy tale in my head the minute I'm sleeping with someone, which, and sometimes they're completely not who they are, but it's, it's like, oh, I already slept with them. So I guess we'll have three kids okay on well, that that could be do you do anything that's kind of embarrassing when you have a crush on someone do i do anything that's embarrassing when i have a crush on someone do you feel like you maybe you don't act like yourself or like do you, I do, I, sure yeah it just depends on like i mean it depends on like what stage i'm at like normally um uh if i if i'm my regular self and i'm just like kind of just starting to talk to someone and it's like I'm super cool. Like, I don't really care about anything. I'm very easy going, mm -hmm. but internally it depends on like who this person is. If I really like the person, uh, I will be 
uh, I will be trying extra hard to not be like, what's going on? What's up? Okay. I want to, <laughs> I want to see you again. Like I'll, I'll just like literally, uh, stop myself from seeing this person like twice or three times in one week. I'm like, chill, dude. Oh, okay. Got it. So y- if you really, really like somebody, you would try to play it cool. 100%. So it, but almost- I also automatically play it cool uh, regardless if I, even if I don't really, really like someone. So I try to just like maintain that same attitude, um, as best as I can. So what if, and the girl ends up thinking you don't like her as much? A lot of girls literally do. Like the last girl was like, I didn't even know that you were into me. Like every time we hung out, I just thought you were like not into me at all. Yeah. I guess that's so confusing. Like we would go and I was like, dude, I was, I didn't say dude, but I was like, yo, we, hung out one-on-one like a bunch of times what what do you of course i like you like of course i'm into you i'm just you know what i mean like we hung out uh, alone a bunch of times that means that i'm like (laughs) into you right is that not yeah no i agree but then do you wait do you try not to hit the girl up like every day or do you just do you go based on how you feel oh i'm fucking terrible texter which was literally a problem but uh 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 yeah, I, yeah, I, I don't, I usually don't. And I have red receipts on too, oh, that I had too. to turn off oh. for, uh, yeah. Cause like this girl was like, what the fuck? Why do you have the red receipts on? Like you keep reading my messages and I'm like, it keeps me honest, <laughs> but it also makes me look bad if the person really cares about not getting like a timely response or something. Um, but yeah, no, I, uh, um, so you're a bad texter as soon as you forget to text. And then you won't admit the girl to the, to the girl in the beginning that you want to hang out with her more than once. So then, how can she tell if you like her? Um, if we're hanging out to begin with, right? If I don't like someone, if I'm not into someone, I just don't hang out with them. So uh, okay, like I wouldn't make an active effort to see you week after week. But I can see I, how to some girls it may seem like, oh, he hung out with me a few days ago. I don't hear from him at all. And now he's like, hey, you want to hang out? It sounds like I had nothing else going on. So do you want to hang out? But like, why? Why would I just like hang out with someone randomly? You know what I mean? I have plenty of friends like and, and other girls that I could be hanging out with. But I want to hang out with you. I have very limited. I have very limited free time to begin with. And and uh, I think um, and I, this is good. This is good to hear another perspective on this because like. Um, this is definitely like an ongoing issue with me where it's like, uh, I, I feel like I don't show affection well enough. Uh, I don't think these are like all the things that I've been thinking about cause it's fresh in my mind, but, um, yeah, like I'm not very, I think I'm not very, uh, communicative with my, um, my feelings towards the other person. Like it really takes a lot for me to start getting like maybe vulnerable, but then even then, um, Words of affirmation is not something I'm good at. Do you think it has to do with how you're raised? Because I feel like I'm I'm very similar to that and I've been working on that. And I do think it's because I'm my Don't you feel like it's disingenuous? Like it just feels like kind of weird saying it. The last guy I dated, he from the begin the minute we started talking, he was literally, Hey babe, baby this, babe that. And Oh I, never. I it irritated me because I felt like it wasn't it wasn't real. Like I felt like Ugh, baby? Oh like dude. we just met, we just started talking and you're already calling me babe and baby. Like it felt disingenuine. And I'm not like that. And then when we stopped talking, he started dating a new girl and they called each other babe and baby within the start. And I told no. my I told my mom, I was like, Mom, like, do you think that's something wrong with me? Because it's so hard for me to show emotion my dude's so out quickly. Here throwing the baby card for <laughs> everybody. Like, what? No. Yeah. No, that's yeah. But she said he that obviously means he's doing that with everyone that's not personable in any type of way, then. Don't take it personally. Yeah, but do you think that there is ever a point in a relationship where you will start using like nicknames? Oh, I don't think I've ever like randomly maybe i guess like i guess there is uh in some i've used the uh, but yeah i don't know i just like but it, words of affirmation are just like not even that it's not even like nicknames or anything like but that. maybe I mean, do you show I mean, like literally saying like um oh my god i really miss you like i don't say that stuff too frequently even if i do miss them uh, and I feel like it's just like kind of weird to say that. I don't want to be like. Do you think it's because it's a fear shit. of rejection? That's in the beginning, sure. But after a certain while, I think it's just more like, um, it's more about feeling like you don't want to be overbearing. You know, I just never want to be overbearing. I can totally relate. What do you? Th- where do you think that 
those feelings are coming from. Um, why do you think if someone likes you, why do you think that you would be overbearing to them? I think it's just personal preference because I don't want someone to be like constantly up my ass. You know what I mean? If someone told you they missed you, that would freak you out. Depends on who it is. And so what stage someone you're dating, you guys are in a good stage and you haven't seen each other for a few days. She's not like, hey, where are you? Why aren't you calling me? It's kind of like, hey, just thinking about you. Miss you. Yeah, it depends on who it is. Yeah, but probably I would like it. Yeah, you would like I, it. I would like it. But I just, I, yeah, you're right. I just don't know how to measure it appropriately. Probably. That's probably the problem. And also because I'm not used to it. Like I'll never say something nice to you, to your face but I'll usually, I hype everyone up. Mm -hmm. Like all of my friends, all the people that I truly admire, respect, like I'm constantly talking about how dope they are to other people on public platforms. I love everybody. I'm always like, this, this person is awesome. They're so brilliant. Look at all the things that they've done. Like, God, what a, like they're like, literally an industry leader. Like, holy shit. Um, that's great, but I'll never, I'll usually won't like say it to them. You know what I mean? Yeah, I hear you and I definitely understand you, understand where you're coming from. I feel like I'm very similar to that or I used to be like that. I still am in some ways and I'm trying to be more open. Um, but do you feel like being that way prevents you from ever being vulnerable with people? Um, I think being that way makes it harder for me to be vulnerable with people, especially in the early stages. And that's probably to protect myself. That's like probably what people do to just kind of build like a protective layer around themselves because um, no one wants to be hurt. No one wants to open up to someone and feel right. like uh, that person is taking advantage of you or they don't feel the same way about you that you do about them. So it's all a measurement. Usually I feel like it's all uh, like a give and take. So um, that's probably the reason. So I think it still stems from insecurity, really. I 100% agree with you. I think that is where it's coming from. But I mean, do you feel like you want to do you ever see yourself wanting to change that for yourself or you just you don't know? I mean, up until recently, up until this past one, like I didn't really consider it to be a problem because usually like I was. I was usually the one who um, like drove uh, the relationship in, in different ways. I mean, obviously, like the big stuff, like define the relationship quote mm -hmm. talks always led by the girl for sure oh that's wild yeah, yeah i just like kind of go really the flow all the way up to that point oh and you start doing that then it's never <laughs> i just yeah. wait for the guy it, once it gets to a point like it, it, it's never gotten to a point where i'm like are we dating or are we not dating like what's going on it's usually always the girl right like even if i don't do anything even if i'm like literally exclusive with this person i won't say it like I won't, I, I won't, I'll never be like, we're going to be exclusive, right? Like I've never, it's always a girl. But, um, but aside from that, it's usually me kind of like dictating the terms as best as possible or cause I'm usually the one that's like working, but this other person was like really uh, busy as well. And in this instance, like it kind of, um, it kind of felt like it was a, like a constant battle to, um, win her affection or to show her that I was, um, I do genuinely care about her. Oh, she kept feeling like you don't care. So you felt like you constantly had to prove that you do. Yeah. And then, and then it would just like get undone. I felt like. I wonder what her Zodiac sign was. <laughs> do you know? I don't. When was her birthday? No, I can't say. Um, but. Just, ba you can, you don't, just June, July, August. I don't know. Anyway. Um, so. Well, it seems like you guys had, you guys communicated differently. And I think, I think that, that sucks. But also my mom told me this one thing that when I used to fight with my ex-boyfriend a lot, my, one of my longest relationships was like on and off for like six, seven years. My mom, we had like the worst fights. We're very, we're both very passionate people. He was a Leo and we were just like butt heads, like crazy all the time. And we communicate very poorly. And my mom always said like, Violetta, like you need to know that relationships are not meant to be this hard like with the right person it's easy because if it? you yeah she's like if you think this is hard marriage is much harder so your relationship is meant to be your honeymoon and your marriage is when you have like real issues and that kind of stayed with me in my head i mean obviously i didn't learn from it but like eventually <laughs> i learned from it and i i do believe that so i think in the beginning, a lot of times when you get with someone, with someone and you seem to have disagreements and it feels really hard and you're like, let me fight for this. Like, we're not opening our eyes to be like, oh, shit, wait, I think this is just the wrong person for me. I don't know. I think that like that might actually uh, don't you 
worry that that might stop you from uh, getting involved with people that you might actually learn to uh, you might actually learn to to uh, coexist with, uh, so especially if them? you like end up loving that person or, or developing like really strong feelings for them. For me, it's more like if they have, if I truly enjoy spending time with them, if I really, really like them, if I, uh, I don't know, if I have, like if, if, if we just click in a, in a good way, I mean, certain issues I will always overlook. Right, or or like, I will work to to fix it through But I think we should not overlook because, for example, you and this girl, she kept telling you what's wrong. You kept saying, okay. And, and I just couldn't Both sides didn't fix what was wrong. Either she should have stopped complaining because she should have just accepted you for who you are because this is where you, the package you came from in the beginning. But yeah. she was, she pretended that it wasn't happening and then it continued. And then you not changing. And then you guys stay in the relationship together. Both sides are not changing. That's why it failed. Yeah, I think it's it was just compromise. Like I always felt like I was compromising and trying to do better, and also like I didn't really ask for much um, from her. Where it it just it was just more like um, you know I just wanted you to be chill, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, but I think yeah. how do you show affection then if it's not texting someone, it's not telling that you miss them because you don't want to come off quote unquote overbearing? Then then I think it's actions like right. If you, um, but I guess here, this was a, a problem too. Like my, my barrier of showing affection through my actions is also very limited too. Like, I guess I'm just like shitty. Like it just like takes <laughs> no, a No, you're not shitty. But, um, but like getting them gifts, um, getting them gifts or hanging out with them, spending time with them. Like that is usually not something I do. Oh, with with oh. no i'm saying like with like other girls that i'm just like seeing or hooking up with or like even friendly with um so i guess i got maybe i got like spoiled a little bit in los angeles and i got too used to that where i feel like everyone's just like kind of doing their own thing and i just don't do any of that so when i do do that for someone i'm like come on like get the idea dude. So i think that's because you know that's your language of love and i think people don't yeah. understand that we all have different languages of love like i definitely growing up i didn't know how to show affection and when i like someone i give them a gift i really do think it's a cultural thing when you're foreign a lot of times you're just like americans maybe are more like say love you and all that stuff really fast and a lot of times you don't grow up with that within your family um i don't say it until i don't say it until i feel it though yeah i'm like that too for me you want to know what my trick is for me um the it's uh, usually when i'm hooking out with them like usually when i'm having sex with them um until i literally can't stop myself from saying it like i i usually realize like i i feel that in my mind like i start saying it in my mind Aww. and do i do i love this person oh my god i think i love this person and then it gets to a point where like i literally can't uh stop myself from saying it and that's when i say it wait during sex um not not just during sex oh, okay like, or not not <laughs> like, not like that's in, like the first time you tell them yeah no <laughs> no no Got um it. but that's when i uh like in my experience that's like when i usually uh come to terms with it or realize it yeah do you think that maybe you just haven't met like your perfect match in a way i mean i don't think i'm ever gonna meet a perfect match if i'm being honest no obviously everything takes work but i'm saying don't you think maybe eventually you will meet someone that makes you feel comfortable enough that your insecurities may go away and then they won't pressure you to say certain things that you haven't said and then you'll feel comfortable enough to tell them when you miss them because you won't feel like they're going to 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 reject that comment or to leave and it won't be overbearing because everyone loves to hear I love you or I miss you. It's never a bad thing for anyone, you know? Yeah, I just, I think it's, yeah. I, I mean, I'm learning. I, we're, we just learn from our... Um, we just learned from our past, uh, mistakes, I guess. I, I can totally relate. Like with my ex-boyfriend, I, I think one of the biggest problems, like I'd never showed him enough affection, but I felt it all. I just didn't know how to express it. And I remember a lot of times when he would go to sleep is when I would just kind of like look at him for a second and I'm scratching him. Cause he would, I, he, I would scratch him for him to go to bed. I'm so lame. Damn. No, it's not. That's awesome. I love that shit by the way. And then it's awesome. Like when I look at him, I felt it. Like I feel it. And that's when I want to say it, but he's already sleeping. So maybe like I'll say it like under my breath 
or something because he's already sleeping or like oh. I want to tell him like my biggest secrets but I never felt comfortable sharing anything because I've, I've said before that my exes were never my best friends even though I want that with a partner and that's when like one time I was really upset about something and he went to sleep and that's when I suddenly started talking about it because it was like my way of wanting to tell my boyfriend something but I didn't know how to damn that's so sad <laughs> yeah that's really so sad lonely. no okay first of all no I've <laughs> I'm not at that stage at all. No, I like was. I usually, I, the people that I choose as partners, I, I usually think about like whether I can rely on them in that fashion as mm -hmm. well. Like I said, like one of my main goals is like we are, it's a partnership. Like the way right. I see it is like you need to build me up and I need to help you as best as I can. Like we need to motivate each other, right? So uh, that's that's the way I see it, uh, and and um, so usually I don't have that. No, I mean, okay, after yeah. a certain point, Whatever. I don't have the problem. No, no, but like the, that, I used to be like, obviously I've, I've grown that. Thank God. But I mean, I'm just saying how close off I used to be with yeah. a partner. Um, but yeah, you said, like you said it yourself, you're growing and, um, I don't know what happened with your last person or whatever, but if it's meant to be, it'll be, but it seems like you guys communicated differently and it seems like it, it was never resolved, but I think maybe she needed things that you couldn't offer her and vice versa. So you need to find someone that can probably be is confident enough that when you're going out with them that they don't need to hear the I miss you every two seconds that they're not worried that you don't care about them and that if they don't hear from you for a whole day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Is that weird? Do you think like if I if I don't say goodnight before uh, going to sleep because I just knock the fuck out and you know that do you think that that's a bad thing if i don't say goodnight like why i that don't was like think a big thing i like, don't think it's a bad thing but i've also outgrown who i used to be i was more insecure with my ex-boyfriend and then he she cheated on me a million times then with the next guys i dated there were a lot of things that i cared about because i was i was holding on to being cheated on and then i i um i projected those insecurities on the next guys so interesting. i was dating one guy who was so needed my attention every two seconds it, i felt it was too overbearing for me to the point that if by 11 a.m if i didn't tell, text him or call him he would be like i was testing you and i still didn't hear from you it's like what i have said this before you can't force someone to say good night to you you can't force someone to love you you can't force someone to like you you can't force someone to hang out with you the more you try to force yourself onto people the more you're going to push them away and people don't get that the more he would say that shit to me that I didn't hit him up before 11 a.m. and he was testing me, the more it, made, it pushed me away. And I always said, like, just because I'm not just because you don't hear from me doesn't mean I'm not thinking about you. A lot of times I think about you all day, but I just a I don't want to come off of overbearing <laughs> and b I just I'm busy, but I'm thinking about you and I'll hit you up when I will. I, for a girl to get upset if you don't say good night every night it might for me it's silly but if for her if that's what she needs to feel safe then as her partner you need to also respect her feelings and if you want to be with this person you know that the the this little thing is what's going to keep your relationship together then why not help her feel safe i know i just always you know what it is i thought it was like stupid like i just i thought it was so insignificant you know i understand but to and, her and, it wasn't and, yeah no for sure 100 percent. and it was like hard I think it's always been hard. Like I have weird things. Like I have weird OCD shit sometimes in relationships where like if you ask me to pick you up and like I live closer to that venue or whatever that we're doing, I'm like, uh, like it just like fucks me up. I can't do it. I don't know why. Like I'm like, can I just like send an Uber to you? <laughs> right. And, you know, does it, and I know it's weird and I know it's probably not like too much of an ask, but I get that way. Like, and it just fucking eats at me it's like it probably a, you, yeah. it irritates me because i'm like why can't we be efficient right now and uh and and this was in my mind like this that didn't happen in this one but like I, i'm saying that um this was one of those things where i just like i felt like it was so insignificant in showing um like showing affection in the grand scheme of things that it just felt like it wasn't i don't know it wasn't no, that I big understand. of a deal but i think to her it probably was more than just a good night it meant like that you cared even though you felt that's so silly i care about you in so many other ways i'm showing it what who gives a shit about a text but to her it meant something else that's why you guys as much as you communicated emotionally you guys seem like you have a large miscommunication and what you wanted what you needed from one another yeah so you can love a person but a lot of times liking or loving a person is just not enough yeah I just, yeah, you're right. I mean, that's why it's like, it, it didn't, it didn't work out. But, um, 
Yeah, I think the other reason also is just like the my workload is fucking nuts. So I think that was like um part Yeah, everyone of the says that, but No, 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 no. Like literally. If I walked you through my day, you would understand. Like right now I I I sectioned off like a big part of my day to be able to do this, but um it, like the things that I had to work around or the things I had to move around are, are still significant. Like I literally stream for 6 to 8 hours every day on Twitch, which is why it's like uh which is why it's like difficult and i think a lot of people don't understand that you know right and i mean as you, anyone you're dating you would want them to respect and to understand it so i can yeah. see also how that can be frustrating if someone thinks it's like a joke or it's silly to them yeah, yeah th that's that's literally what it is like despite the fact that i make money off this platform despite the fact that like i want to move into this platform like a full time and like do this as a job like um I, I feel like uh, for a lot of people who are unaware, they could be like, well, what the fuck? You're just like in front of a camera in your own house. You don't have to do this. Like, why are you spending so much time doing this when you could be spending it with me is like kind of the mentality that I think some people can have. Um, and I, I, it's not good. So it sounds like you already just having this conversation with me there's certain things for you that are non-negotiable that maybe you need to realize they're non-negotiable. And in the beginning, when you get with someone, you should kind of let them know. And so they're aware of how important certain things are. Just just how you, she never explained to you how important the good night text was to her. I don't think- She did. She did multiple oh. times. I just like- <laughs> You didn't listen. Okay. Kept failing. No, it's not that I didn't listen. It's just like sometimes like- Sometimes I just didn't do it. Like I just eh. Yeah, and that was maybe one of her it just seems like you guys need different things, but I'm saying also when you next person you get with, it's important for that person then to also understand and respect how important being on Twitch is for you for 68 hours and you know. <laughs> yeah. No, I I'm not even saying it as a joke. I No, 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 you're right. People streamers, they're on it. I mean, I've, I've watched streamers before playing Fortnite and they're literally on there for 12 hours. I'm like, when did they go to the bathroom? But I understand that, but not everyone, like my sister all the time makes, makes jokes about what I do for a living. Yeah. And we're like, she wants me to be somewhere like 5 p.m. and I'm still working. She doesn't understand it because she doesn't believe I do anything. Yeah. No, I totally get that. Yeah. Especially because like people look at us like, oh, well, you're running on your own time. Like, why would you? Uh, I wish I could get paid to post pictures on Instagram. Yeah. Or like, <laughs> why, why do you, you, you you're, you're managing your own business. You could just like not work that day. So like, right. like, no, you can't like, you have obligations You have people that you work with. Like, um, okay. I am wondering, um, have you ever felt lonely and how do you deal with that? Um, <laughs> the only times I feel lonely are like when it's, uh, when it's like right after, um, when it's just like right after you break up with someone or, or something like that, where you just like feel kind of, because uh, your support system is gone you know what i mean but aside from that I, I i you just like build another support system right like i have my dog i have my friends I have people i can rely on so i don't really ever feel super alone um only maybe after like uh certain instances where like i remember after my breakups like i feel um like i've kind of pushed away my friends you know what i mean in order to like please this other person that i'm with like 24 7 and in those instances where I like truly feel alone, where I'm like, fuck, like, what did I do? I fucked up. Like, I really just like lost myself in this. And I usually do have a tendency to like lose myself in, in things that I'm passionate about. And if I'm passionate about the relationship, like I just kind of, um, get addicted to that. Um, so those are the only, uh, instances where I feel that way. And then, so if you pushed away your friends during the relationship, which is very common, a lot of people do that. How do you then deal with the feeling of loneliness or dealing with your breakup? Do you then reach out to your friends again? Yeah, of course. I just annoy them until they uh, fucking, because like it, these are friendships that I've cultivated over. Right. Like, I mean, these are really long-term friendships. So it's not like, you know, if you, if you have a 10 year relationship with someone, like they're not going to be like, oh yeah, we didn't talk for the past five months. Like it's over and i still keep in touch with them too so it's not like out of the blue where i'm like hey guys i'm single again like let's hang out <laughs> also i feel like guys are different too or they just like yeah. they don't give a shit they're super chill do you do you jump on to a new person right away or do you kind of hold off for a in second? a relationship like i know for guys sex is different obviously but do you see yourself like jumping to sleep with someone new right away or do you or like to date someone new or do you kind of hold off and heal yourself first oh duh, i don't I don't, but I should, <laughs> I've learned, um, I've learned the hard way that 
um, like mindless sex right after a big breakup or whatever is not the right thing to do. It's not helpful. It's not healthy at all. And it doesn't, it probably in some instances makes it worse. The only Why? time where you like truly feel, you truly heal after like a big breakup is when you finally realize that you have the capacity to feel similar feelings for another person uh, for the first time ever. And, um, and that person doesn't have to be like a very serious relationship, but that person still has to be someone that you care for in a way that, uh, in the way that you wouldn't for just like any other person that you're hooking up with that you're like kind of, uh, testing the waters with. Why did you learn that it's not a good idea to sleep with someone right away after? Um, I felt really empty and, and shitty after relationships where I've like kind of dove back into the sexual marketplace <laughs> where I felt like, um, yeah, I just felt like empty and I, and because at that moment you're like kind of comparing um with the other people to this person that you felt so much for yeah um, you had so many feelings for and you had this like uh a deep connection this intense connection with and it's obviously going to pale in comparison no matter how hot or like how good the sex is you know does that make you want to text them right away like your ex and be like i miss you so much or that's not who you are no that's not who i am i i so I try to make things work in some instances, but like I said, usually I'm the one who's like, no, this is not working, you know? Uh, so then you won't go back? What if you made a mistake? Uh, no. I, 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 I usually weigh the pros and cons quite uh, like almost professionally, wow, precisely, okay. where I look at like um, pros and cons. And by the way, not just from a personal perspective, but from the perspective of the other person as well. Cause I care about this person and I will, uh, I will look at it and say like, am I a burden to this person? Do we bring out the best in one another? Are we good for one another? And usually at that point, it's like, it's not working, but I have tried in the past, um, and, uh, to, to make things work and yeah, no, I don't. So once you break up, it's done forever. Yeah. I'll do everything in my power to just like, not, I I'll want to text them like really bad but I won't do it. I want to look at their, that's another advice I can give to people. Don't fucking look at these people's Instagrams. True. Don't look at these, like, uh, don't look at these people's like, uh, Twitter, Instagram. Don't fucking think about them at all. Uh, it's really difficult. And it, it's a, it's a tremendous amount of work that you need to do. Cause it's like, you get that fucking hit of like, whatever that feeling is. I don't know if it's like so true. oxytocin or whatever, where you are like, Oh, I got it. I saw it. Now I know what, what she's doing. Like, yeah. And it's terrible. It's so bad for you. And it only m makes it harder and uh, worsens the process of, of finally moving on. Yeah. But I mean, the process, the healing process is all the same, especially if you feel for this person. I feel like I've changed the way I heal over things. I kind of get over things really fast. Yeah. But I also don't think I've ever, like anyone I've dated the past year or two has been someone that I was like in love with. So, yeah, I think that's the big difference. Like it depends on how much you feel for them or like at what stage or when this happened or how, how much you like, uh, or how much you, uh, you, uh, like dated them I yeah. guess, for how long. I mean, I've been, I've been already thinking about it and stuff. Cause I, I think eventually I'm ready to get more serious. And I think maybe date the past, like last year when I was dating, I was drawn more to people I knew I wasn't going to end up with. So it's kind of like you, you go out with someone knowing it's going to end. And I don't know why people do that. I'm definitely researching to better understand myself, but I definitely something I think I was doing, maybe it is to avoid getting hurt or whatever, but this isn't about me. This is my therapy session. All good. Um, no, no. I mean, this is good. This is uh, like, we're, we're, um, I feel like I'm, I'm revealing too much. You know what I mean? What? I don't know if that's like a, not at all. I'm, I, I mean, I'm not like a very private person. I'm on my uh, Twitch all the time. So I'm like talking about, uh, politics. all this stuff. Yeah. Politics and my personal life too, quite frequently. Um, but actually that's not true. I, I usually don't, um, talk, uh, extensively about like girls I'm seeing or whatever. Um, well, you weren't talking extensively, ex extensively about girls you were seeing, but I like, I personally feel like my, I love to be able to connect with people emotionally. So the second you talked about your insecurities right away, I'm like, I feel like my eyes widen up and I'm like, I'm now like, you got my focus. Like I'm interested, go on. I love when people are able to open up. That is such a, such a beautiful thing. And I wish more people did it, especially boys. There's nothing wrong with that. It, it makes the person actually way more attractive. 
I don't know. I always feel like uh, being, I mean, not in this instance, but like, I feel like being vulnerable early on with someone can, uh, I feel like ruin your, um, like it, it makes you look different in their eyes. Cause like the expectation I feel like early on in a relationship is that everything is perfect. So when you come across too strong or you show like one of your insecurities or one of your vulnerabilities earlier in the relationship, when the other person is not doing that same thing, when they're trying as best as they can to be as like secure and confident as possible, uh, uh there is, there is this, um, reconfiguration of power, I think where they're like, Oh, well, this person's like kind of, I mean, I guess this person's like really into me. Um, I think honestly, that's all in your head. I see where you're coming from. But at the end of the day, if someone likes you, they're going to like you and then they're not going to, they're not going to judge you if you show emotions. Yeah. Too, but what if you don't fast. like yourself? Well, I've, I agree. Very I, I don't, I'm saying that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I don't like myself. So I, I don't even believe when people are like, I like you. It's a, it's, it's, uh, it's like a weird thing for me to condition myself to believing. Cause I'm like, I fucking don't like myself. Cause I know myself. I'm like, I'm terrible. I, I could be so much better. I should be so much better. Well, a, that's really good that you're self-aware because not everyone understands that they don't like themselves and that's why they're pushing other people away when they're dating them. And it is hard to be in a relationship with someone when you don't like yourself. It is hard to understand then why the fuck do you like me then? I don't get it. Yeah, I no, don't like me. Exactly. No, that's like, I've that's the too. main thing where I've, I'm still there. I always feel that way. And that's insanely normal and i've been there too but i think the best way before you jump into another relationship again is to kind of figure out how to work on yourself where you do get to a point where you do like yourself because when you get into a relationship you can't expect other people to complete you or to tell you that you're great every two seconds you have to feel that about yourself obviously you know yeah, i don't even want that though i know no i i'm yeah. like i was like that as well i but get really uncomfortable when people say nice things to me like people that i care about like if yeah. they say nice things to my face i'm like haha Oh, okay. Thanks. <laughs> like, yeah. just, I, I don't know what the fuck that says about me, but I think it's because maybe you don't fully f feel those things about yourself, but, but I think since you're so self-aware and you understand that it's important for you then to, to work on yourself where you can get to a place where you do like yourself and you do feel good things about yourself. So then when you do get with somebody and they say, Hey, I think you're very lovable and you're so great. You don't get uncomfortable. You're like, I am fucking lovable. Like I agree, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that type of confidence is not being egotistical or whatever. It's, it's being able to love yourself. And I think the most successful relationships come from you loving yourself before you're able to love someone else. And you're never going to have a successful, non-toxic, successful relationship. If you haven't figured out how to love yourself first. Yeah. I don't know when I'm going to be able to do that. Well, That's... you're going to get there. First of all, you're only 27, but it's good there. Honestly, like you, it's so good how self-aware you are and the fact that you understand that. And even you making these jokes. So not liking yourself, like a lot of people are in that same position. Um, and I think it takes time. I, I used to feel that way, but I, I feel like I, I had to come to the point where I've realized that no one's ever going to love me unless I love myself first. And it just kind of had to get uncomfortable with myself and tell myself things like everything I'm succeeding in or things that I like about myself. And it was a very uncomfortable conversation to have with myself. And it took a long time to do that. Yeah. But you, you get there and um, you are like you seem like a great guy and I'm sure you have a lot of dope quality. So I hope that eventually when you do get with a good person that it you won't push them away or it won't make you feel uncomfortable if they say something because people don't say stuff unless they mean it. So if someone who loved you told you good things about you, they meant it and you shouldn't question it. True. So that's that. Um, I guess like I want to kind of wrap this up. Um, I think we, this was a good, <laughs> I, good conversation. So. I don't know. Do you get the, do you get very personal and deep with people normally? I was not, um, I, I didn't think I was going to talk this much, ex this extensively about my uh, relationships and shit. That's honestly my goal. I think, I think just who I've become, a, who I was a few years ago until now, being so closed off with my emotions versus now I try to be more open. I live for this. And I think where we are, especially in Los Angeles in our industry, I feel so empty a lot of the time being around so many of these people where the conversations are so empty. Yeah. Well, I think that's because people just want to be, uh, uh, people want to put up a front because yeah. that's, and those are very successful people. I agree. So 
I think the most successful people in this industry are those who are capable. Like I go back and forth on this where I'm like too emotional at times or I get angry. I don't hide my emotions, but then I think like maybe that's not healthy to hide your emotions and like push them down, you know, um, whether it be anger or, or any other emotion. Uh, and, and, but I look at everyone who's very successful in our industry and I see like, no, they are a fucking brand every step of the way. They literally promote themselves a specific way and, and they stay on that no matter what, like they, they don't really, um, uh, they don't really sway away from that brand that they've, uh, presented themselves as. And that, that stems from like, I mean that not stems from that literally ranges from like, um, influencers to mm-hmm. uh to someone even like logan paul if your personality is like a crazy or whatever like you just stay that on on camera or when you're uh, in action i feel like i don't know how emotional he gets in real life I, I or i don't know how emotional he gets in like podcasts and whatever you did you did his podcast recently right um but anyway you don't have to talk about it i don't want to put you in an uncomfortable situation um, i'm not uncomfortable yeah i did his podcast i didn't feel like talking about it because i was really pissed off about that podcast and i didn't talk to him for a month because of it oh really wait why secretly um because even my mom watched the interview and she was just like i thought you guys were friends why is he talking to you like that and i felt i just felt embarrassed and i i felt also stupid it is what it is i got over it and like i've learned to also not cut people off just because they upset me i, I think it's when someone lets you down, you just have to set boundaries and you have to kind of like, now I'm aware of where, how Logan is, how Mike is. And that tells me like, okay, don't. Who's Mike? I don't even know. Don't... This guy who does the podcast with him, stays, li- lives with Logan, sucks his dick every day to stay in the house, I'm assuming. <laughs> like obsessed Damn. with him. <laughs> Not in a bad way. Good for them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is shocking. Anyway, um, I think when people let you down, it's, you know, it's important to just set boundaries with them. Now I know to not ever talk about anything personal to me because I won't get the respect that I want. That's it. It is what it is. Okay. So I'm going to leave off one last thing before we close is that, and that would be, what would you tell your younger self? Ooh, it's going to be all right. That's what I tell them. That's it. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's going to be all right. Cause like when I was younger, I, I, um, I mean, maybe it was hormone induced or whatever, because in my adolescence, I just, I was so sad and angry and and insecure about all of these things that I, uh, wanted to accomplish in the future that I thought they were just dreams, you know? Mm -hmm. And as you get older, if you condition yourself and if you work really hard, you start slowly but surely achieving all of those dreams. And, um, I think that there was a sense of, uh, there was a fear of not knowing if I'd be able to do those things when I was younger and uh, the place I've gotten to in my life, I'm, I'm very happy with. All in all, the world might be terrible uh, and I might always feel a, a sense of restlessness because I haven't accomplished all of the things that I want to or there's always more growth. Um, there's always uh, more milestones that I can uh, achieve or whatever but all in all i'm in a pretty good place and and i would just say hey just keep on trucking <laughs> things are gonna get better okay so you feeling you, like you are in a good place telling your younger self like it's gonna be all right and w- seeing everything that you've achieved and succeeded on your own and um and where you're at right now um doesn't that make you feel happy with yourself or proud of yourself and uh momentarily i think it's just like i mean it does i just have to constantly think about it but i i don't i probably should uh i guess meditate and just like kind of contemplate these things i just don't have any time and also i don't know i feel like it's a waste of time it's terrible but um yeah I don't have a like a, I don't I I rarely have a moment alone with my thoughts. You know what I mean? Like it's just I'm fucking working like nonstop. Yeah. So like even this conversation is like therapeutic in many ways because I don't have it. Like I don't have a I especially lately like I just never have a brief moment to sit down and really think about um the way things are. It's just constantly like uh, the burden of all of the things that I need to do that I haven't done yet, just weighing me down every day. Like you got to, you know, 
set up a LLC or mm-hmm. in, uh, you know, all the long-term goals that I have and the things that I need to do to achieve those long-term goals. And like the short-term goals that I have, like that's constantly in the back of my mind so much so that it's just like, it's just like added stress that I live with that I'm carrying around everywhere I go. And, um, I just, I don't even, I don't even think about anything outside of that where like every brief moment is like, all right, point A to point B. Now I got to go to point C. All right. Time to do this. Time to do that. But that must be so hard. I guess. I mean, I, I deal with it. I'm like, it's just, um, it's chaotic, but, uh, I work, I work with it. Well, what do you do to make yourself happy? Hmm. Huh. I have designed my life in a way that I only do things that make me happy. And I'm very fortunate for that. So everything I do, all of these things that I'm doing, usually are are making me happy. And um, if I'm uh, if I'm avoiding like if I'm dodging satisfaction in the short term, it's usually for pleasure in the long term. You know what I mean? I don't need a hamburger that's right in front of me because I think that in the long term, having a healthier body is going to yield better results allow me to maximize pleasure in a, in a more meaningful way down the line so everything i do is is uh, happiness like everything i do gives me happiness in that way or, or a sense of fulfillment rather like my job is very fulfilling accomplishing uh, goals i set out my set out for myself is very fulfilling and and seeing the impact that i have on people is is very fulfilling and gives me happiness What's next for Hassan Piker? Um, I don't know. Right now, I'm just uh, growing my Twitch. And um, my hope is to get to a point at Twitch where I am so independently successful there that I don't need to work at the Young Turks anymore. And then take that. And I, I, I said it like it's like 5,000 subs. Once I get to 5,000 subs on Twitch, I'll quit TOIT and I'll start using the subscriber revenue that I generate from Twitch to uh fund my own uh youtube videos rather than just like the ones i do on the young turks but like longer uh and and uh, more comprehensive on my own personal youtube and just like, grow my other media platforms slowly but surely and hire help to be able to do that as well so that's the next goal but then i also have to pursue more traditional media opportunities because um i used to do that a lot back in the day and I just like kind of gave up on it because I was like really focused on Twitch and I have to get back to that too. But that's what's next. That's good. Where can people find you? Um, all my social media is different. <laughs> my Instagram is Hassan D Piker. I just hit 300,000, which is not big. I know, but no, that's awesome. I saw you posted that one shirtless yeah. picture today. Yeah, I know you commented <laughs> under it. So you guys know we're not having sex. Um, uh, my my Twitch is Hasanabi, H-A-S-A-N-A-B-I, and I'm live every day after uh, usually around like 3 p.m. Pacific till all the way to like fucking 12. So it just depends on uh, what kind of day it is. So if he's not texting you goodnight, just go on his Twitch account and you see these like streaming live, he's not cheating. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, so On uh, YouTube? Uh, on YouTube, it's Hassan Piker. I don't even know what like the channel name is. My YouTube is like tiny. I think it's like 50,000 subscribers or That's something. That's a lot. And also Young Turks on YouTube. And the Young and Turks Facebook. on YouTube, yeah. And, and the Young Turks on Facebook, yeah. The breakdown on Facebook. Um, Yeah, and Hassan the Hun on Twitter. Is there anything I didn't ask you that you wish I did? No, this was f- super comprehensive. Perhaps too comprehensive. Oh, that makes me so happy to hear. That's good. For me, like it's just so important for me to like understand a person. Yeah. I'm happy I got to understand you better. Thank you so much for coming on. And thank you guys for listening um, to another episode of Too Tired to Be Crazy. DM me, let me know your thoughts, and I'll see you guys next Thursday. Bye.